Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Mario and welcome to my channel. It's welcome to episode seven and as always, thank you all for rocking with me on my channel. Um, all likes, comments, and subscriptions are definitely appreciated. I, I am humbled by any and all traffic that comes to the channel. Like I said, when I first started, I'm just trying to pe reach people like uh, myself starting out in this tour host business with the one car or people just thinking about doing it. Um, so today we're going to touch on uh, the probably a little bit more about money. Now, I don't have any money to give you all. I don't, I'm not that big of a channel yet to give out money or some type of giveaway, uh, maybe one day, but, not, but no, not right now. So we'll be talking about um, the, a little bit more about the Turo IPO and um, uh, taxes. So let's talk about everybody's favorite subject, right? Taxes, <laughs> said by no one. Um, <laughs> just a couple of things that you could talk to your CPA about, um, and just to kind of help you navigate through filing your taxes for, uh, being a Turo host. You can expect to receive, um, I believe your 1099 via email, or at the very least you'll get it in snail mail, I believe, what's today, the 23rd. So with any company, you should receive it before the end of January, it's required. So just always just check back through your emails and uh, check your mail. So like I've said six billion times before, um, this is a new space for me, specifically how you file taxes for being a tour host. Now, I know in the past I've received 1099s for being, uh, you know, working uh, in the gig economy space, you know, um, DoorDash, Amazon Flex, being an Uber or Lyft driver or whatever have you. Um, I believe if you've made over in that space, if you've made over $600, you will receive a 1099. Now, what I've been read into in the Turo space, if you've made over $2,000, or excuse me, $20,000, if you've made over $20,000 and you've had over 200 trips, you will get a 1099. I believe it's a 1099K. Now, if you are a sole proprietor, or you have a uh, was that a single member LLC, you will have to file a Schedule C for your personal taxes as well. And then if you have not made over twenty thousand um, dollars in uh, Turo income, you may not receive a ten ninety nine k. You may want to double check that with Turo. I would just shoot support a quick message and see how that works. But you may not. But that does not mean you should still not be keeping books and maintaining your receipts and everything that you have put into this business, just in case if you do. Now, I know the rule of thumb with 1099s, what I've come to understand is it's almost like you're in the service. We're in the service industry. So I know waiters and waitresses, they get a base a base rate and then they get tips. Well, a, a percentage of their tips, and I believe the magic number is between like 15 and 20%. Anyway, Whatever tips that they get, they should be putting aside that for at the end of the year because there are no federal and state taxes taken out. So it's the same thing with a 1099. Um, so hopefully you guys starting out or um, with the seasoned uh, with the seasoned host, you know, maybe drop a, something in the comments. But I guess for all revenue being brought in. I guess a percentage of each of those trips that you get paid out after Toro has taken their cut, you should probably be putting away 15 to 20% of that just somewhere so that when tax season comes, you're not overwhelmed with if you have to owe some serious amount of money. So hopefully you guys have been tracking that. But again, you can always double check with Toro. So remember over 20,000 and 200 trips, probably going to get a, a 1099. If it's under that, you may not, but I, that's not something I would play with. Um, and that's just not, if I'm a CPA or not, that's just being real. Don't mess with the IRS, keep track of all that stuff, and then you will be prepared for that portion. Now, if I were you, here are some of the questions that I would be asking my CPA person, or I know for me, um, and I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but I've been using two. Uh, I use TurboTax or for your H&R blocks of the world. Again, I'm not affiliated with any of these people, but I use TurboTax. And of course, like I told you, my frat brother's a CPA, so I always run stuff past him. But these are probably some of the questions that you should be asking 
your tax professional when it becomes time. So again, I'm breaking the fourth wall. Don't even know, but I just took some notes. So you should probably be asking about um, the insurance on your car. Like, can you, as uh, the payments, the insurance payments, are they deductible? I believe they are. Um, and then also just kind of a CYA thing. You may, I think I've seen it in some of the groups. You may want to have, you may want to purchase general business insurance just for those weird and crazy claims that a, a renter might make against you. But yeah, see if you, if the insurance payments you can take or, or deduct or if they're deductible. Um, the pickup location. So if, um, shout out to all my people who, uh, leave their cars at airports or at like a carport or was that the short term or long term parking? Whenever you take it out, you have to pay something. So, or basically, or if you rent a space or anywhere where you leave your car at, um, those payments that you make are deductible. So that's another kind of item I would run past your CPA. Um, if you've hired a manager, like if you've run your fleet from one car to five car to whatever that, and you've just discovered that you needed help and you've employed somebody, you know, to help you with like pick up and drop offs. Um, I believe that is somehow deductible. So I would definitely keep that in mind. Um, yeah, vehicle expenses. Like, um, I believe, let me see, anything in the category and it can be multiplied by the business use percentage. Um, how to calculate that, ask your CPA, I do not know, um, to get that tax write-off for vehicle expenses. Um, and then other vehicle expenses will be like maintenance expenses, like your oil changes, tire rotations, air filter change, whatever have you. Repairs on the car, if you just repair the tires, engine, transmission, um, anything outside a car, like cleaning, car washes, things like that. And then like car registration and fees, ask about that. Um, your uh, bouncy subscription or whatever you use for your GPS and it has a subscription fee, I believe you can um, you can definitely possibly write that off, ask your CPA about all of this. And then the big one, uh, depreciation of your car value. You may definitely need a breakdown from your CPA on that. I believe it's, is it the, the mileage that's divided by the number of years you plan to keep the car? I think it's up to five years. So again, Double check all of that, or if season host, please, if if I've done my research and I've said it wrong, or I've got my verbs wrong, please correct me. Uh, drop that in the uh, in the comment section. Um, also, shout out to all of my uh, hosts out there who have leased cars for this. Check your leasing agreement to see if it's possible for you to be using your car for peer-to-peer -peer sharing before. Um, but definitely, if it is, talk to your CPA about all of that as well. Um, Turo fees. Um, if you owe anything outside of the split, like um, all the fees that can be occurred by the host, uh, incurred by the host. Host trip cancellation fees, host no show fees. Um, I guess it's it's circumstantial cleaning violation fees or vehicle misrepresentation uh, fees. I would. Like I said, I would talk about all some of this stuff is probably outdated. Um, like I said, I was just doing like general Google searches or whatever have you and just talking to some people. Um, oh, also uh, marketing and advertising. So if you've ran ads to try and get people to go to your page or if you've used like um, or if you've built a website to forward to your Toro site to get people to go on there or basically anything you've used for advertising that's deductible as well. Um, home office deduction. Like for example, this is our uh, office space. I could probably use this. Um, I'll have to read into that with my CP on how that works, but home office deduction and obviously at, at, in this day and age, we're all working from home. It's no longer like a fad. It's like a reality now in this, in this time now we're in. So definitely check that out. Um, just going on with some more continue about like what you can deduct. So I was talking to my uh, my CPA guy about car payments. 
So these are his words verbatim. Let me see. You can't usually deduct the car payment, but you may be able to deduct the interest portion for the percentage that you use the car for business. And then he goes on also to mention that, but you can either deduct the mileage or actual expenses like maintenance, car washes, et cetera, et cetera. So those are like some things that I would be talking to my CPA about if I were you guys. Um, I would just keep all of that in mind, whatever you use for this Toro business or what you have used. So keep that in mind when you talk to your CPA and then, um, yeah, so that's like some things that can help you leverage the tax system and try and help you kind of maximize your profits and just try and minimize your tax liabilities and anything. And, and like I said, I, I don't know it all. Um, I've only made three bucks doing this so far. <laughs> no, and honestly, I think I've made, um, I told you, I told you guys in the last video, I was using the car sync product. Um, it's been really dope. So I think I've been doing this for about a month and a half now or close to two months. Um, you know, minus my, my car having a ding in it. Like I talked about in the last video, um, I was kind of just working on, you know, create revenue for the car. I think I've made like 300 bucks so far. Um, so in my mind, I don't think, but this will be my time to learn and practice and get everything in order for if I do reach that point where I'm making 20,000 plus hope one day. But yeah, though, those are just some of the things that I would, um, talk to your CPA about, or just anybody that does your taxes. Um, probably I wouldn't ask your cousin that does your taxes if they're not licensed or certified. I wouldn't go to them for tax advice, especially with doing this, or if they don't really know too much about the peer-to-peer -peer car sharing space, an actual licensed professional. You know, like I said, TurboTax of the world, H&R Blocks. I feel like there's another big tax name out there. Um, but yeah, anybody that's actually licensed, uh, a licensed tax professional, I would ask. So those are just a couple of things to keep in mind um, to help you uh, navigate through the uh, tax system. So I hope, hope I've helped with that portion like I said, for all of my season hosts who have done this, drop in the comments, like, basically, I don't, I don't mean verbatim, but just the things that you've itemized for deductions and just kind of give a quick example of how you did it to just kind of, you know, just kind of help helping people out and move them along in this space so that they, uh, that, so that they uh, file all of this stuff correctly. So any help with that is uh, greatly appreciated. Now on to the really exciting and the fun part of the video, and I mean it this time, the Turo IPO. That's like the hot news everywhere, right? So uh, again, like I said in the last video, um, they uh, submitted their papers um, on January 10th to uh, go public with uh, their company to trade public instead of it just being private. Um, if you read up on that with you know the Bloombergs of the world or the Wall Street Journals, actually... I will drop their actual um, S1 filing in either the description or I'll pin it in the comments so you can read it verbatim on what's going on with that. Their ticker symbol will literally be Turo, T-U-R-O. Um, the companies that are setting up the actual amounts for the trade are going to be like your J.P. Morgan Stanley's of the world. Um, I believe Citigroup has a hand in this. Let me see where the rest of my notes are at. Sorry, guys. I had my fingers in these places where I would just flip to the page and be like, bam, there it is. Um, ah, that's <laughs> on the first page. That's crazy. Yeah, so Morgan Stanley's got a hand in dealing with this. JP Morgan, Citigroup. Um, I'm not an investment specialist, but that also might be a way to leverage this Toro IPO. You can invest in them or in that, and then you will still kind of have a piece of the Toro, uh, the Toro IPO. But anyway, there's no set dates. But like I said in the last video, if you're tapped into like any like news or news centers that follow stocks like uh, MSNBC, they stay pretty pretty close with um, that type of news. So Toro's going public, right? Um, this will be your chance if you fit the criteria to get those pre-IPO kind of share prices. Um, and again, in the filing, I believe, 
if you look on page, it'll be page 15 of the article. It's the offering page. It'll give you everything that make what that will um, describe if you are eligible to relieve uh, to uh, possibly buy shares before the before the IPO. Um, in the terms of like uh, you have to be you have to live in the United States or the UK. I'm sorry to my Canadian brothers and sisters. I don't know why that's a thing, but maybe they'll offer Toro on the. Um, excuse me if I get this wrong. The the C the the CSE the Canadian Stock Exchange. If I've totally butchered that, I'm sorry. Um, I know whenever I do like international purchase for like stocks or something outside of the U.S., I use TD Ameritrade. Um, so yeah, there's um, I believe you have to be an All Star host. You basically have to have nine up up above ninety across the board with like your acceptance rate, your commitment rate, your response rate. Um, I believe those are some just some of the metrics. You can't have any violations between January first of twenty twenty one and December thirtieth of twenty twenty one. Um, and you have to have completed one trip, which I don't know what the one trip is because if you're an all star host, you've had over ten. And then also something about for renters, if you have like the insider rewards, if you're part of the insider rewards program. But again, it's all on page 15 of that. And then also for all my number crunchers, page 18 will have all of the numbers um, in the area of the summary of uh, consolidated financials and other dates will be on page 18. So that'll have a whole financial breakdown of everything that the company, you know, how much they gain, how much they've lost. I, I, I honestly don't, I mean, it's, it's driven by us hosts and renters, but I have no clue how they lose money, especially if they're, if they're low key, high key, like just, um, cause the Turo site is free, but obviously you pay for the insurance plan. So I don't know how they're losing money on that, but I guess you'll see it all in the financials there. So it's definitely a great opportunity to see the inner workings of the company and be a part of that. Um, like I said in the last video, my plan is to uh, buy and hold, hopefully get in at a low price and just go from there. Um, I know as of right now, uh, just right now at a glance, I mean, Turo's taking off. I know there's new renters like me or excuse me, new hosts like me every day. And just people just overall like, you know, what's Toro? What's that? I mean, I've heard of it, but I've never used it before. So, you know, with this IPO, that'll probably bring more publicity, you know, more traffic. But then also, like the Notorious B.I.G. said, more money, more problems. So, on the back end of that, I would just keep in mind, um, you know, they're probably going to use more for like ad generation and trying to get more people to invest and probably their standards are gonna go be a little higher. Um, in a in a in a perfect world, if they're generating more money, hopefully like the Turo fees don't go up, and hopefully they kind of are more generous on their cut. Like I told you, I'm doing a 65-40. It would be dope if if I could get like 65-20. If <laughs> if I could get a little higher than that. But like I said, I'm I'm not that naive. I, I know how business goes. But in the A-perfect world, if your company is doing great, then prices should stay kind of where they are or get lower. But, you know, greed drives everybody. So um, it's all about the mighty dollar, right? So I will be on the lookout for that because, you know, with people with the, the newer cars, you know, the Teslas of the world, Lexus, BMWs, they make money off of those. But then, like, the little guys who have like older cars as they begin to get phased out you know some people with 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 young with uh with older cars might get you know might get kind of left behind so i would just keep keep one eye on this ipo but then also keep in the back of your mind they're probably going to be making some changes once this happens just to attract more investors and the the higher ups in the world who who really make the decision so it's a dope opportunity but like I said, do your research. I'll leave this entire document on here. I, I didn't mean to scare anybody, but you know, like I said, just read and do your due diligence on if this is a right opportunity for you to invest. And just keep in mind, you know, business has always changed. As as far as what I can tell now, uh, our us hosts always get the short end of the stick. 
and it benefits the company and the renter. So now with this IPO coming out, it is definitely going to benefit Turo more. So we'll just see what the what the trickle down effect is as you know, if we're affected as as hosts with host with fees or if it affects the renters more with rental fees. So we'll see about that. But yeah, definitely read all of that. Um when you get a chance and uh that's the update. When I know more about an actual date, I will definitely keep you guys posted as soon as possible on that. Also, we'll say this, as very proud as I am of being a one-car host, uh, unfortunately, since I don't have a lot of, um, and it might be not only my case, but case for a, a lot of new hosts, if you don't have a whole lot of uh, renters under your belt by this time, you may not be eligible for like pre-IPO pre -IPO share uh, uh, trading opportunities, but... Um, and, and again, I'm not affiliated with them, but I know Robin Hood, uh, the Robin Hoods of the world, the E-Trades of the world, they usually have, they have like a, um, a new like IPO launch notifications now. So you may be able to tap into that if you have an account, but, but again, if you're a one car host, and you're just getting started, uh, you may not qualify, but don't be discouraged because there's still an opportunity out there to invest. We'll just see what the what the uh what the what the uh the, the the original buy in prices will be and then you just make a decision from there. So we'll see what happens. Yep, so guys that's it. Uh like I said I tried to make this quick. Um so on one end you can invest like I said it's about money so you can invest your money and also you can maximize your profits and trying to gain some leverage in then in, in filing your taxes. So um like I said with that being said you know, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for everything that you guys have helped me out with this channel. I, I am humbled by that. And again, um, like I said, I'll, I'll try and keep you up to date with everything as soon as possible. So until next time, peace.